Shalom, and welcome to this little discussion on about the letter Yud. I am Dr. Ann Davis. By the way, the letter can either be pronounced Yud or Yod. I was taught to say Yud, so that's the way I say it. The original Hebrew alerts us to the significance of the letter Yud, which points to the world to come. Who will enter the world to come? those who are humble. I can't emphasize enough the importance of humility. Humility is to is not to rely on yourself, not to rely on another person, not to rely on a certain situation, but to rely completely on God. So here's our little letter. It's a tiny little letter, and it's above the, the middle part of the line when you write. The Paleo-Hebrew is a hand attached to an arm, and I'll show you a picture here so you get a sense of the hand attached to the arm. And that, of course, is the hand of God, and that's what, in Jewish tradition, that's what it represents is the hand of God. God's power created both this world and the world to come. Since Yud is such a small letter, it represents humility, and humility is just that very, very, very important uh, characteristic of our personality that God wants to, to have us grow in humility. So let's look at uh, the smallest letter in, in the New Testament. Yeshua calls, refers to the jot and the tittle. That's the King James Version, the jot and the tittle. And he says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. That's the King James Version. It's the one I learned on. Uh, the New American Standard Version, which is what I use now because it's closest uh, translation to the original, is has translated smallest letter or stroke, which is a much easier thing to understand than a jot or a tittle. But the jot is the smallest letter. It's the yud. It's just a tiny little pick, just a little uh, stroke, tiny little stroke to cre create the yud. But what is the tittle? The tittle is a horn-like projection on the letter. There it is right there. See, it's a little tip that comes up on, on the top of the letter, sort of like a tiny little horn. And uh, there are, um, and that, that, by the way, is the letter bet. that has that tiny little tittle, the little horn, tipped horn. There are other letters here that uh, have the tittle, and here they are. And some of them I've worked on already with you, so you should know the dalit, you should know the hay, you should know the het, now, we haven't done the next two letters, which is the kaf or the resh, but you see that all of them have that little, that little tiny little horn. And look again at the difference between the hay and the chet. They look exactly the same. They both have the tittle, but the hay is open, which invites us in to be in God's presence, and the chet, which is closed up. Okay? Now, let's look here at God created the universe with two letters. Now, this is the Jewish tradition. And I am including in my teachings some of the Jewish tradition, but I'm also adding a lot of my own thoughts about the spiritual aspect of, of the Hebrew letters. So we have two letters. We have He and we have Yud. I've put them in, in red. Now, the He appears in the name for God, which is Yah. Yah is a name for God. It's a yud hey. And then the other one is a chet and a yud. Now you see the difference between the chet and the hey. The hey is open, the chet is closed. The, the chet yud is the word hai, which means life. And you might recognize when you have wine and you lift up your glasses, lechaim, to life. Chai means life. So God created this world, and God also created the world to come. So the Yud appears in the Holy Writing several times, meaning life in the world to come. And I'm going to give you several examples 
of how the Yud has 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 um, led the Jewish sages to believe that that the particular verse is about the wor the world to come, and it's the Yud that has tipped them off to that. So we take one here. God created the world to come with Yud. The Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, the living being, let me read it to you in Hebrew. It starts from the right. Va yitzer Adonai Elohim et ha Adam. Adam, of course, is Adam. Now, the first verb on the, on the, on the right, the, the one verb in the sentence is yatsar, which means to form. But look at this. There are two yuds. Because there are two yuds, the Jewish sages said this this letter yud is signifying the the life, because God breathed the you know breath of life into man, and, and man became a living being. So that those two yuds there are sort of a, a clue to tell us that the yud is representing life. So we have the two yuds. And they also uh, signify the dual nature of mankind. Now, mankind has created in us positive and negative. All right, and 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 the whole idea is for us to to rid ourselves of the negative, become all positive, because then we can come into the presence of God. So, what is our dual nature? We're mortal, and uh, at some point we we will be immortal. We're physical. Now we are also spiritual because we have God's spirit in us through our faith in Christ. We have good in us. We have evil in us. Unfortunately, we're not all good. Uh, we're trying to become more and more and more good and less and less and less evil. And we are also righteous, but, but we're, we, we have a sinful nature, but we're trying to become more and more and more righteous. So again, and God created mankind for both this world and the world to come. And I'm going to give you another verse that has those double yuds. God was good to the midwives, remember, in, um, in Egypt. And the people multiplied and became very mighty. So look at the Hebrew. You, we have yet have Elohim. So um, tov means good. In the verbal form, there's there's a, a letter vav that's missing in the middle. It's dropped out, but which is normal with some verbs in Hebrew. It's dropped out. But you see here the two yuds. So again, um, this this goodness of God is is um, given to us in this in this double yud. So we have a reward in this world for their good deeds, a greater world in the world to come. Okay, let me give you another example. We have here, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Now there's a double yud in here, and the and the the, uh, the sages, the Jewish sages, have concluded that this is the reward of long life refers to future life in the world to come. It sounds to me like it would be in this in this world, maybe it's in both this world and the world to come. But the Jewish sages have concluded it refers to the world to come. Now, let's see. Let's, we've got one more I want to show you here. We have righteous men, all right, righteous without sin, wise men, knowing the difference between good and evil and always choosing good, and their deeds, the things that they do are righteous deeds are in the hand of God. And that's that symbol of the hand of God. Whether man does not know whether it will be love or hatred, anything awaits him because we've got a judgment coming. And and the judgment is going to uh, separate the, the good from the evil. And so our heart is desiring to become more and more righteous, to grow closer and closer to God. Um, so that at the time of judgment, perhaps we will be selected to participate in the remnant. Now, all those with faith in Christ have the promise of eternal life. All Jews also belong to God, uh, according to the Hebrew scriptures. But uh, those whom God sees as righteous at the time of the judgment will be uh, selected by God to participate in the remnant. 
So God seeks a righteous remnant for the world to come. Now, I want to do something else. The smallest letter U represents humility, and that's I just can't emphasize the humility enough. Now, the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. And I'm going to give it to you in Hebrew because it's really powerful. We have here, ve ha-ish, ish is a man, ha-ish Moshe, Moshe is the way we pronounce Moses' name in Hebrew, ve ha-ish Moshe, anav me'od, me'od means a whole lot, just a lot, a whole, whole lot, anav is the word for humble, meaning humble or low. So guess what? Moses is worthy of the world to come because of his deep humility. So that's our, our letter Yud, and I encourage you to go to the Bible Interact website where you will find over a thousand teachings, and we're adding more every week. <laughs> Uh, we've categorized it so that you can find just exactly what you're interested in. And also, if you're interested in learning how to read Biblical Hebrew, we have beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses. A lot of people just take the beginner, uh, which they really enjoy because it gives them a, a feeling, a sense of the Hebrew. But if you're really serious, you can go into the intermediate. And if you go into the advanced, I would like to, to work with you on that. Uh, keep in mind that our partners are very special to us. They belong to the Bible Interact community. They donate a, a monthly donation to us, and that's the only way that we can exist. So uh, we give uh, a discount to partners for all of our courses, not just Hebrew, but all of our courses. We also give them many other perks also. So you might want to consider becoming a supporting partner of Bible Interact. With that, I wish you shalom.